good morning students so in the previous class uh, we discussed about uh, applications of the kirchhoff law that means how to apply the kirchhoff law and with the help of kirchhoff law what we can solve like we can find the current in the different branches so we solved some problems based on that and we can find the potential difference between the uh, any two points in the circuit so by assuming some imaginary cell or between applying directly between from one point to other point and finally we also discussed that uh, we can also find uh, effective resistance in the circuit right so we can also find the equivalent resistance in that circuit and now uh, basing on that i will explain uh, one more problem that means if whenever such junctions are given with the help of that we can find potential or current flowing in the different branches also so after that i will explain that we strong bridge so in this uh, so now what i am saying is suppose here uh, the circuit is given like this a branch of a circuit So three resistors are joining here. So now these are the points here. Now let us see here. I am taking this as uh, this is point A having some potential of 20 volts, and this is point B having some potential of uh, 10 volts, and this is a point C having some potential of uh, say 5 volts. And now this resistance is, uh, suppose I am taking this 5 ohm and this, this resistance is 20 ohm and this resistance I am taking it as some 15 ohm, right? And so now here our question is, uh, we need to, this is the junction O here. And so now we need to find the uh, potential at the point O and current flowing through the 15 ohm resistance. So write it as an next problem in it. So this is also just application of the Kirchhoff law only. With the help of Kirchhoff law, you can solve it easily. So a branch of a circuit is shown in figure. A branch of a circuit is shown in figure. Then find potential at the point O. Potential at the point O. And also find current flowing through the 15 ohm resistor. And also find current flowing through the 15 ohm resistor. So now here I am assuming uh, some currents here. We know whenever you are applying the Kirchhoff of law, first we assume some current distribution in the circuit, right? So that is, and we also know that that is our choice. You can assume current in any way, that means flowing in any direction you can assume. The only thing is, it should obey the Kirchhoff of uh, first law at any junction. Suppose here I am taking this, uh, this is the current I is flowing along this direction I am assuming here. Right? And so next here let us consider some current I1 is flowing along this direction and some other current I2 is flowing along this direction. Okay. And so now here this I1 and I2 uh, may be opposite direction actually. So now we are assuming like this because here you don't know actually here. If this is uh, less than the 10 volts if you are getting for example here, less than 10 volts if you are getting, then current will flow from high potential to low potential like this. So if it is like that, then finally you will get that I1 value with the negative sign. So that finally we can uh, get that uh, conclusion there. So we know already, we saw already some problems based on this. We can assume current in any direction, right? And so now just I am writing this picture of uh, first law here. So now by KCL, that means picture of current law or picture of junction law at junction uh, Whoa. So if I apply this sketch of uh, junction law at that junction, so I can write this as I is equal to I1 plus I2 we can write. So now just that I value I am substituting from here. So that means you know the potential, here I am assuming this potential at this point as V0. Potential at that point let it be V0. This is we are assuming, so we need to find that, uh, find that value there, right? And so now I can write this as uh, now current I, we can write as potential difference, V by R formula I am writing, there V is nothing but potential difference across the resistance, right? So now potential difference across this resistance I can write as, we are assuming this is high potential, so 20 minus V0 we need to write, got? So then it is 20 minus V0 by R, this is 5, is it clear what I am writing? Just I am writing, 
I is equal to V by R formula I am applying here. This, uh, this V means potential difference across the resistance. Potential difference across the resistance means when you are assuming current in this direction, that means we are assuming that this is a higher potential. So 20 minus V naught we need to write. That gives a potential difference across this resistance by its value. And this is equal to now I1. I1 so this one we can write here. So then uh, potential this one current is flowing like this. That means we are assuming this V0 is higher potential. So then it is V0 minus 10 by this resistance is 20 plus I2. I2 means here. So similarly here potential difference is V0 minus 5. So then it will be V0 minus 5 by here the resistance is 15 ohms. Right? So now just we need to simplify this equation here. So if you simplify this equation, then you will get uh, 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 then you will get the V0 value. If you know the V0 value and by substituting V0 values here, either you can calculate I1 or you can calculate I2 or you can calculate the I values. So let us simplify this equation here. So just I am multiplying with that uh, say 60. Then if you multiply with the 60, then 12 into 20 minus V0 is equal to 3 into v0 minus 10 plus 4 into v0 minus 5. That's just it's a simplification only. You can do uh, as you wish. And so here this is uh, 240 so it is 240 minus 12 v0 is equal to 3 v0 minus 30 plus 4 v0 minus 20. Right? So let us write all the V0 terms on one side and then let us simplify this equation here. So then it is uh, 3 plus 4, 7 and this value will become uh, plus 12. So then it is uh, totally 19 V0. So 19 V0 is equal to. So now all the constant terms we need to write here. This is uh, uh, say 30, plus, uh, 30 minus 30 and minus 20, 50. And so then it is 290. And from this we can write this V0 value as uh, 219 uh, 90 by 19 volts. So that is our V0 value potential at that uh, junction. And so now uh, by using that now we can find the current here, right? So then uh, this value uh, to identify the whether these directions of current or uh, uh, correct or not what we are assuming. So let us further simplify this, then this value I think approximately if you define this, so I can say it as 15.2625 uh, volts let us consider that, that means uh, you will get some other uh, values, so I am taking up to that uh, second decimal. And so now here 15.26 volts means then it is greater than the 10 volts, so right, then uh, this I1 current will flow in the same direction only. And similarly, it is greater than this uh, 5 volts also. And so this assumption is also correct. That means uh, the current directions, what we are assuming is correct only. If you substitute in that I1, I2, I3 expressions, then you will get those values there. That means now I can substitute like if you want to find this I1 value. So I1 value means now we can substitute like uh, V0 minus 10 by 20. So that is nothing but 15.26 minus 10 by 20. So then it is uh, 5.26 by 20 amperes. And similarly now you can find this I2 value also. This I2 is nothing but actual ever question current for the 15 ohms. So then this is 15.26 uh, minus this voltage is uh, 5 by this resistance is 15. And so this, this I2 value will be 10.26 by 15 we can write amperes. So if you want we can further simplify these values here. And now if you are adding that I1 and I2 values uh, then you will get this total current I here. That means if you want to calculate then this I is equal to I1 plus I2 you can write. You can add those two values there right. So that is a way of solving such a type of circuits. That means just we apply the Kirchhoff first law. I is equal to I1 plus uh, I2 and then we are applying the just this V, uh, I is nothing but we can write it as uh, uh, delta V by R that means potential difference across that resistance by R, right.
and so now in this uh, circuit sometimes they include the cells also that means they will give the potential difference and they will give this uh, cells also now let us see how to solve such a type of questions then So now let us see this circuit like uh, this is resistance is there and here one cell is connected like this and here I am considering another cell is connected here so now that means in addition to the previous uh, problem just we are including the cells also here right so now i am taking this uh, this is again point a and this is point b and this is point c and this is uh, say 20 volts and this is 10 volts and say point c is 5 volts and so now let us take this emfs as i am giving like uh, uh, this is Thirty volts, and this is ten volts, and this is uh, five volts, and this resistance is say uh, ten ohm, twenty ohm, and this is thirty ohm, and this is the point over here. So here also same. We need to find the potential of that point O and current through the different resistors. We need to write. So just write that question in the circuit shown in figure in the circuit shown in figure find potential of the junction O potential of the junction O and current flowing through the different resistors so then here also like our previous problem here also I am assuming some uh, current directions here you can assume as I said you can assume in any direction suppose here also I am assuming like current is flowing like this this is our assumption only finally it may be uh, direction may be wrong so then just I am assuming here current is flowing like this so similar to our previous assumption I am taking here currents right so then I1 this is I and I1 and I2 is flowing like this irrespective of the polarities or irrespective of the potentials I am taking like this now again uh, by Kitsch of current law a junction O. So then that you can write this as. So just I can write similar to our previous. I is equal to I1 plus I2. Let's suppose this is equation 1. And so now here similar to our previous uh, problem. You can't substitute our uh, I1, I2 values directly here. Because in between that uh, the resistors and cells are also there so when you can't write directly the delta v by r value here right so for that what we can do is you can apply the kirchhoff law here you can apply kirchhoff law from uh, here and this is v naught let us assume here again so then you can write the uh, kirchhoff law starting from one point to another point here we know how to apply between a points between two points here and so then i am writing this uh, by KVL Kirchhoff voltage law along AOB that means that points I am taking here AOB and so then that we can write it as uh, I am writing along that AOB direction I am writing here Kirchhoff voltage law so then uh, between two points we discussed already VA minus IR so that means minus 10 into i because we are traveling in the direction of current so here we need to write uh, minus 30 because we are traveling from positive terminal to negative terminal and uh, here it is uh, v naught and uh, directly i can move to uh, this point here because here nothing is there we are applying from here to here and so then here it is uh, minus uh, minus minus negative terminal to positive terminal we are traveling here so plus 10 you will get and the same current I1 we are assuming here we are traveling in the direction of current so then 20 I1 minus VB is equal to 0 right 
So just we are applying Kirchhoff of law from here to here. When you are applying from here to here, no need of including this V0 here. V0 doesn't include. In Kirchhoff of law, we write potentials when you are traveling from one point, whenever resistance or cells are there. So starting from here, you can apply up to here, right? Or you can also do one thing. The another, another thing what we can do is, you can apply between from here to here. Then you will get I value, expression for I you can calculate. And similarly from here to here you can apply. Then you will get, uh, you will get I1 value. And similarly from here to here you can apply. Then you will get I2 value. Then you can substitute I1, I2, I3 in that equation. So like that also we can solve. That is your choice. That means if you are solving like that, then it will be similar to that of our previous problem. If you are solving like this, then you will get equations in terms of I1, I2, I3 and I. And then we need to solve those equations. Then by solving those equations, you will get those uh, I1, I1, I2 and I values first. From that you can calculate our V0 value. Is it clear? That means what I am saying, in this method, when you are writing from here to here, next we consider another two points like A to C or B to C you may consider. So you will get another two equations. That means another one more equation. By solving equation 1 and this equation and that equation, first you will get I1, I2 and I values. Once if you know the I, I1, I2 and I values, you can calculate this V0 value easily. Or instead of this, instead of this applying this uh, from A to O, if you are applying directly from this A to O, uh, A to O and O to B and similarly from O to C, then you will get directly V0 value first. So then from that V0 value, you can calculate this I value. I think this method you know, uh, you, you can solve easily. So just I will explain here how to see this. I will write the equation, do the calculation by yourself. This V0, VA, VA value is given as 20 minus 10 I, sorry, I minus 30 plus 10 minus 20 I1. Then VB value we can take it as minus 10 is equal to 0. So now let us uh, simplify this equation here. So then this minus 10 and plus 10, uh, uh, plus 10 minus 10 you can cancel and here minus 10 you will get. So then uh, this equation I can write this as minus 10 I minus 20 I1 minus 10 is equal to 0, right? And so that this equation we can write as you can substitute this I means I1 and I2, I1 plus I2 you can substitute here. So that I can write this as minus 10 of I1 plus I2 minus 20 I1 is equal to 10. You can cancel that 10. Then you can simplify this I1 and I2. Minus 3 I1 minus I2 is equal to 1. So this is equation 2. Is it clear? We are dividing with the 10. And then we are simplifying this. Minus I1 and minus 2 I1 is there. Minus 3 I1. So that is our equation 2. Next similarly apply the Kirchhoff law KVL from one point to the other point. Like you may consider AOC or BOC also can consider here. So just I am writing like uh, by KVL along AOC. That means between the points I am applying here. So then you can write directly here. I am directly substituting the numericals also starting from here similar to this. 20 that means potential at point A minus IR that means minus 10 i minus 30 and next here after this next we are traveling along this we are traveling in the direction of current here so minus 30 i2 and then here it is 5 and that 5 we are traveling from positive 10 mil to negative 10 mil so it is minus 5 we need to write minus 5 and finally it is minus 5 potential of that point c so that is equal to 0 you can simplify this. So then it is uh, 10 minus 10 I, I means I again I am writing I1 plus I2 minus 30 I2 right. So then it is minus 20 you will get that means it is minus 40 and then plus 20. So minus 20 you will get is equal to 0. And so then again I can divide with the 10 uh, and you can write this equation as uh, minus i1 minus 4i2 
is equal to 2. This is say equation uh, 3. That means now by solving these equations, then you will get uh, I1, I2 and I values you can calculate from that. So by substituting those values, uh, by uh, writing those value again from O to A, you can write the kirchhoff Lie equation, then finally you can find the V0 value. So let us simplify this. I am multiplying this equation with uh, 4 and, and I am subtracting that equations there, right? And that means what I am writing is uh, equation 2 into 4 minus equation 3. That means I am doing the simplification like this. So let us multiply this equation with the 4. So then minus 12 I1 minus 4 I2 is equal to 4. So just we multiplied this equation with the 4. The minus of this value we need to write. So then it is minus uh, I1 minus 4 I2 is equal to 2. We are subtracting these equations here. So this is plus and this is plus and this is also plus. Sorry, minus you will get. And so then this value you can cancel here I2 value. Then this value is minus 11 I1 is equal to 2 you will get. Therefore I1 is equal to minus 2 by 11 amperes. And so now we can observe here we are getting this negative sign here. I1 value we are getting as negative sign. So negative sign means I1 is flowing in opposite direction here. So I1 we are assuming flowing like this. Now actually it is flowing in opposite direction. That is our uh, conclusion from that, right? And next similarly you can by substituting that I1 value in this equation you can calculate that uh, I2 values there. So from equation 2 I am writing like I2 is equal to I am writing I2 that side minus 3 I1 minus 1 right and so then this value we can write it as minus 3 into I1 value we can substitute here minus 2 by 11 minus 1 and so then it is 6 by 11 minus 1 so which is minus 5 by 11. So therefore this is our I2 value here, I2 value is minus 5 by 11 amperes, got it? So then I2 value, now from this I value we can write here, I is equal to I1 plus I2 you can write. So which is uh, minus 2 by 11, minus 5 by 11, so minus 7 by 11 amperes. So all currents are opposite to our assumed direction here, so right, that is our final conclusion. So it is a advantage in that uh, applying the Kirchhoff law here. There is no any confusion while applying the Kirchhoff law here. Just if you apply that uh, signs properly, then you will get that. You can assume the current in any directions there. And next here, um, this is I1, I2, I3 values, that means I values. Now our next question is to find the potential of that point O. So can you say how to find the potential of that point O? So for that simply, now we should include the V0 value here, potential of that point O. Then simply what you can consider is you can apply the Kirchhoff law from here to here, A to O, right? Now I will apply that uh, Kirchhoff law here. So let us see. So now by KVL from A to O. So only from starting from A and until this point O we are writing here. So directly I am substituting these values 20 minus i into 10 or 10 i minus 30 minus v naught is equal to 0, right. And actually I said another method in the beginning. So that is nothing but this one only. Uh, uh, see uh, first let us calculate this v naught value from this and so then actually from this I can write. So v naught is equal to from this minus 10 i and minus 30, right? Just this V0, sorry, minus 10 you will get. Minus 30 and minus 20. So this is just minus 10. So right, just this V0 value I am writing this side. Then it is minus 10 and minus 10 I already there. Minus 10 I means you can substitute this value here. V0 is equal to minus 10 into I is nothing but minus 7 by 11 into minus 10. So this is minus of minus plus you will get. So that means here this is 70 minus 110 by 11 volts. So this is V0 is nothing but minus uh, 40 by 11 volts you will get. 
So that is the potential of that point uh, V naught. So like that we need to find here when cells are also included in that term. That means when cells are not there, simply you can say problem will be very easy. Just with the help of that H of first law you can solve the problem. And whereas when the cells are included like this, then uh, definitely some calculation will be included in this. So then that is a way of solving that. So in the beginning I said another method. The another method is nothing but instead of applying this H of law that is so in this method you need to identify here first we calculate i1 i2 and i values right then from that we calculate the v value the another method is nothing but first you will get the v naught value and from that we can calculate this i1 i2 and i values there so to find that v naught value just we need to find the i i1 and i2 values like similar to our previous problem and we need to substitute those values in this equation so let us see how to find i i1 and i2 values just by using the same equation right i am taking the same equation here then you can write this expression for i now this part is this problem is over i am saying the another method another method means first we calculate i know uh, v naught value then you will get i1 i2 i3 values right and so now here i am taking this uh, from this equation i can write this as uh, 10 i is equal to minus 10 minus v naught so i is equal to minus of 10 plus v naught by 10 right or you can further you can write this as minus 1 plus uh, minus 1 minus v naught by 10 you may write so then this is our uh, i i expression next similarly you can find i1 value by applying kitchenoff law between o and b so only applying between O and C and between O and uh, B like that you can calculate the I1 and I2 values also here, right? Now simply for example if you are writing from O to C. Now Kitchen flow we are applying from O to C like this then you will get I2 value. Similarly if I apply from O to B then you will get I1 value. So now I am applying from O to C. If you are writing from O to C V0 minus so this is 30 i2 minus 30 i2 and minus 5 and this is also minus 5 here this is equal to 0 right so therefore i can write this as 30 i2 is equal to v naught minus 10 so therefore this i2 is equal to v naught minus 10 by 30 right and then now i have similarly apply between from o to b so by kvl along O B. So V naught uh, plus 10 minus uh, 20 I to I1 minus 10 is equal to 0, right? So directly I am applying here from O to B. And so now from this again write uh, 20 I1 is equal to. So then minus 10 and plus 10 will be cancelled here. So V naught, right? And so then this is nothing but I1 is equal to V0 by 20 you will get. This is our I1 value. Now we can substitute this I1, I2 and I values in the above equation 1 here, right? So this is I1, I2 and I value. Substitute these values here. Then you will get V0 value by solving that. Got it? And by finding the V0 value, if you know the V0 value, then you can substitute those V0 values in these equations. So from that you can find this uh, current i1, i2 and i3 value. So that is a, a reverse process there. First we will calculate i1, i2 values and then we calculate this v0 values there. So that is either you can solve like this. Is a further calculation is clear what I am saying? We substitute this i1, i2 and i values in this equation. So then you can observe that then only variable will be v0. So then you will get v0 value. So once v0 value we know then we can substitute here in this equations and you will get i1, i2 and uh, i values you can calculate there, right? So that is a way of uh, uh, solving the equations here. So either you can find a current values first or potential values first. So that is in case of such a uh, junctions here, when such a junctions are given, uh, you can calculate or you can apply the Kirchhoff flow like this. So now next, before going to that uh, Kirchhoff, uh, that means before going to this circuit analysis, uh, I will explain the V-Strom bridge. 
because actually Bistrom bit we will discuss in the measuring instruments while we are discussing about the measuring instruments. But I will explain here itself because with the help of that Bistrom bit also uh, we can solve some of the circuits, complicated circuits easily with the help of that Bistrom bit, right? And so now let us see about this uh, Bistrom bit. So, Wiestrom bridge. So, bridge means it is not ordinary bridge. So, here bridge, uh, Wiestrom bridge in the sense simply it is a device used to find the resistance. So, generally we find the resistance with the help of this device or you can also compare the two resistors like here generally four resistors will be involved in that uh, circuit majorly. So, in, out of that four resistor if you know the three, three of them you can find the fourth one and that means unknown resistance we can find if two of them are known then we can compare the remaining two that means we are comparing means we can find the ratio like uh, r1 by r2 is equal to how much we can compare like this so those are the general applications but actually with the help of this you can also find the how much strain is produced in this uh, uh, in the material and so that is also to be strain meter we can use it as a strain meter and we can also measure the light intensities there. So, I will explain uh, how to, uh, how the, uh, this Wistrom bridge works to measure the strain or uh, how it uh, measures the light intensity. So, just let us first go to the what is Wistrom bridge and uh, uh, what is the, what are the conditions for this Wistrom bridge here. And this Wistrom bridge is actually the same, the principle of Wistrom bridge we will discuss in some other applications or other devices like uh, potentiometer and in uh, meter bridge. So, that we will discuss later after completing of this uh, circuit analysis. So, the just I will explain the uh, Wistrom bridge and what are the conditions uh, for the balanced Wistrom bridge. And so, now here uh, this Wistrom bridge means generally it consists of uh, four resistors here connected in the form of this quadrilateral. So, here a golemeter is connected here and this is cell and here some uh, switch will be there here and sometimes some external resistance series resistance are also connected here which is not important for us. Here sometimes they may connect some resistance also here and so then that is uh, not required for us. So, that is not important that means that will that is not included in our circuit. And so now here uh, this resistance is P and this we consider as Q and this is R and this is S, right? And this now here this G is nothing but our Wistrom bridge and that means galvanometer. Galvanometer means it is a device used to find the small currents, very small currents we can find and we will discuss later it can be converted into ammeter and it can be converted into voltmeter also. That conversions we will discuss later. So that means it is a device used to measure the very small uh, currents and we can also find the direction of current flow also with the help of this galvanometer, right? And it is a very sensitive device. So, generally in the general practical circuits, uh, I, whenever you are using the galvanometer, we connect a high resistance box in series with this. So, that means here some high resistance box will be included in this. So, then HR, high resistance box. That is because as I said it is a very sensitive device. Sensitive device means it is generally designed to measure a small currents only, very small currents of micro amperes like that. And so then uh, when large current is flowing through the device, the device will get damage. So to protect that, uh, so we connect a high resistance. The high resistance in the sense of order kilo ohms uh, we connect like this or mega ohms we connect such a high resistance here, right? So, then uh, that is the general arrangement of the circuit here. So, P, Q, R, S, those are four resistors, four resistors connected in the form of a quadrilateral like this. And so, between two junctions, we are connecting this galvanometer here. So, this is, I am taking these junctions as A, B, C, D. So, between two junctions like B and D, we are connecting a galvanometer. And between two opposite junctions, that means A and C, we are connecting a as a cell here, right? 
that suppose this V is a VA, voltage of the solar EMF of that cell let us consider and so now here uh, so that is a circuit diagram standard circuit diagram or the basic circuit diagram for this Wistrom bridge right and so now in this PQRS those are resistors that means the value of that resistance also is indicated by that uh, PQ only that means here resistance is there suppose if you are taking this as 100 ohms for example then P value is equal to 100 right 100 ohms similarly for example if it is some 500 ohms then Q value is you need to take it as 500 ohms so that is the meaning of that PQRS so those are the values of those particular resistors so we call them as PQRS that means P resistor Q resistor R and S right so as I said so this now this circuit is used to find the unknown resistance so out of these four resistor uh, four resistors here so here uh, out of these four resistors if three of them are known to us then we can find the fourth one right out of the PQRS if three of them are known then we can find the fourth value or if two of them are known then we can compare the other two resistors here so in addition to that here this G that the G indicates both galvanometer as well as it indicates the internal resistance of this galvanometer. So galvanometer means it is a device. So any device will uh, possess some internal resistance, right? So that internal resistance of that device is nothing. G itself will represent internal resistance also. So remember that G is a indication of it is a galvanometer. So this device is a galvanometer. So it is a galvanometer and it also that the G indicates the internal resistance of this galvanometer that capital G indicates the internal resistance of this uh, uh, galvanometer and HR is a high resistance so then uh, when you are reaching the balancing condition we remove the high resistance box there so I will explain what is the balancing condition now right so just to mention that V strong bridge V strong bridge is a device Waste from bridge is a device used to find used to find unknown resistance or resistivity resistivity of given material resistivity of the given material. It consists of four resistors PQRS. It consists of four resistors PQRS connected in the form of the quadrilateral, connected in the form of the quadrilateral as shown in the figure. Between two junctions, between two junctions, we connect a galvanometer a galvanometer G and a high resistance box in series with it in series with it and between two other junctions between two other junctions that means opposite diagonal opposite uh, junctions we connect a cell of EMF say V, a cell of EMF V. Here G also represents capital G, also represents internal resistance of the galvanometer, internal resistance of the galvanometer. So in any circuit whenever you are connecting a galvanometer in series with it high resistance box will be there whether it is mentioned in the circuit or not mentioned in the circuit. So practically we connect a high resistance box in series with it and we remove that high resistance when uh, when you are reaching this uh, a very small currents and so now here uh, uh, just by taking the current distribution we apply the Kirchhoff loss here and so now here I am taking this total current is I here 
and some current say I1 is flowing here and I2 is flowing here, right? And so now here in BD, actually we don't know whether current is flowing from B to D or D to B. So I'm assuming because we know in Kirchhoff law we can assume the current in any direction. So from B to D I'm assuming here and so then here this current uh, you can say like uh, I some current is just I am applying the Kirchhoff law uh, junction law directly I am writing here I1 is reaching this junction out of that IG is flowing along this direction. So then the current in this direction we can write as I, I1 minus IG I can write. Right, directly applied the Kirchhoff law and I am taking that. And similarly, let us write here. Current along in this direction, we can write this as I, I2 is flowing like this, then this uh, IG is reaching the junction. So, both are reaching the junctions. So, I can consider like I2 plus IG, you can consider here. So, that the total current uh, I1 plus I2 you will get, which is I, that flows out of that uh, junctions there. Right? So, it is the current distribution in this. And so, now let us apply this uh, uh, Kirchhoff law and let us write the equations here, right? So, first I am applying uh, like between these two junctions I am applying here. That means uh, for this loop I am applying here. Kirchhoff law for this loop. So, in this loop I am applying here in this direction. So, by KVL for loop AB D A, right? So for this loop, I am applying the Kirchhoff law here. So let us write the equations now. So minus I1 into P and next here. As I said, G is the resistance of this golonometer we need to consider here. So then you can write this as uh, I G into G and next we are traveling from here to here. So that I can write this as uh, plus I2 into R. So, this is equal to 0. No source is there in that loop. And so, now this I can write this as I1 into P plus IG into G is equal to I2 into R. Suppose it is the equation 1, right? And then next, you, you may consider the other loop here. Suppose I am taking this loop and let us apply the Kirchhoff again in the same direction, like in clockwise sense I am applying here, right? And so now there I can write this as, uh, now just apply the Kirchhoff law for this. So by KVL for loop BCDB. So that means for this loop we are applying here. So for that loop if we are applying, then let us write the Kirchhoff law minus I1 minus I2 into G next year plus i2 plus ig into s yes. next we are traveling like this plus ig into g is equal to 0 so now this equation again i can write this as uh, i1 minus i2 into q is equal to so i am writing here ig into g so this is i1 minus ig plus uh, I2 plus IG into S. Suppose it is the equation 2, right? And so now here we write, uh, now these are the general equations now. Now here we mention that when the bridge is said to be balanced, Wistrom bridge is said to be balanced. So now the Wistrom bridge is said to be balanced when IG value will become 0, right? That means, or I can say that here we adjust the values of this P and Q such that the current flowing through this golonometer will become zero. That, that means if you are adjusting these values, uh, P and Q values or uh, R and S values, that means resistance in that circuits, we can get a situation where this IG value will become zero. That means we can observe in the reading of this golonometer here, it shows uh, zero. And now when you are re reaching uh, IG value very close to zero. That means almost uh, like one milliampere, two milliamperes current, or almost if you are reaching the zero, the current goes on decreasing. If you are changing some resistance PQ value suitably here, now when you are almost approaching that zero uh, zero value, IG value as zero, then we remove this high resistance box from the circuit. So the purpose of high resistance box is here 
to protect the golna meter from the high currents when high current is flowing through the golna meter then it will gets damaged so to protect it from high currents we are connecting the high resistance box in series right now when you are reaching the almost zero that means already current is reduced here so to get the values more accurately we remove this high resistance box so resistance box in the sense just to, yeah, there will be some plug will be there if you remove the plug then automatically then current will be that means that resistance will be excluded from this that means no need of removing all the connections so resistance box will be there when you are going to the laboratory you can absorb those resistance box so just here uh, some uh, actually in the practically that resistance box will be there like this that means here some plug point will be there so one like uh, uh, this plug will be there like this screw will be there like this and here in between this some resistance will be there here the circuit connections will be there like this so if you are uh, putting that plug here if you are putting that plug actually that indicates that now this is a conducting path here then current will flow directly from one uh, one point to other point directly like this because this plug will makes in contact with this so directly current will flow like this when you are removing that plug that means if you want to uh, short circuit that high resistance we need to keep that plug we need to close that plug if you want to include this resistance we remove this if you pull it out just we can uh, we can pull it out like this so just if you are putting it putting it like this then it will makes a contact with the wall here it will makes a contact with the wall then it will be short circuited current directly flows here below this resistance will be there like this then no current will flow through the resistance that means if you want to remove this just we need to close that uh, plug there if you want to include the resistance just we remove this when we remove this then circuit will be like this right now there is no chance of flowing current directly here so current definitely should pass through this resistance then here that high resistance value will be there here so this is nothing but our working of that high resistance box there. just that box will be there if you want to include the resistance we remove the plug so that the current will flow through the resistance and the resistance will be included that means initially the situation will be like that and that uh, plug will be open opposition will be there if you want to uh, short circuit that yeah, that means if you want to remove the higher resistance just we close the plug right so that is a simple arrangement only so that means we can remove that higher resistance box here so when you are removing higher resistance box then you will can calculate its value more accurately that means exact value we can calculate there right so it is the purpose of this higher resistance box so then uh, whenever uh, later there will be different uh, arrangements will be there or different meters will be there where we use a galvanometer so always remember whenever you are using galvanometer definitely we will use this high resistance box here that is the purpose of the high resistance box to protect the galvanometer from high currents so because initially suddenly if you switch on the circuit then suddenly large current may flow through this galvanometer because we don't know how these resistors are arranged there so then initially to protect that we need that so when you are arranging adjusting these values such that current through the galvanometer is zero then you can remove this high resistance box here then we can find those values more accurately there right and so now here after this so now i am saying that current i uh, current is approaching to zero so when current approaches to zero means you can say that the potential of these two points must be same we know there is no current flowing through the circuit when the potential of the two points are equal so that when two points of equal potential are connected to by a resistance then there is no current flowing across that because potential difference across that resistance will be zero and so that here no current will flow through this resistance uh, that means through this galvanometer here so then we can also say that potential of this b and d will be same then no current will flow through the galvanometer then the bridge is said to be balanced so that is the balancing condition of the wisdom bridge so remember that balancing condition of the wisdom bridge means no current will flow through the galvanometer because the points a and a point b and d will be at same potential so mention that so wisdom bridge is said to be balanced after this wisdom bridge is said to be balanced when current flowing through the galvanometer is zero when current flowing through the galvanometer is zero this is possible when this is possible when vb is equal to vd potential of b is equal to potential of d
so this is the balancing condition for this so when wedge is balanced then ig value is equal to 0 as well as we can also say this uh, vb is equal to vd we can say there so that is the condition for the balancing wisdom bridge so whenever bridge is balanced then that is the indication there so from that what we can say is when this bridge is in balanced condition so whether this resistance is there or even if you remove that resistance there is no change right because no current is flowing in that path you may uh, even if it is present in the circuit it doesn't affect any current value so even if you want you can remove that right so now let us see how these equations changes when you are approaching that such a conditions there right so now let us see what will uh, what the changes takes place in these equations here now so that means i can write this value as i1 into p is equal to i2 into r right suppose this equation i am taking as equation 3 got it just here in this equation 1 i z value is 0 so this term will become 0 then i1 into p is equal to then you will get i2 into r right now similarly from equation 2 from this equation again let us substitute ig is equal to 0 so then ig is equal to 0 means you can substitute here then you will get uh, i1 into q is equal to this term is also 0 and here also ig value is 0 then i2 into s you will get so then this is equation uh, 4 now let us take the ratio of that equation uh, 3 and 4 so now let us take equation 3 by equation 4 if you find this ratio then i1 into p by i1 into q is equal to i2 into r by i2 into s you will get so from that what we can write is uh, p by q is equal to r by s so that is the most important condition here p by q is equal to r by s that means then this when this condition is satisfied then you can say that the bridge is balanced condition that means it is a, a like a reverse if and if only condition here if this ig value is zero then definitely that ratio will be satisfied p by q is equal to r by s that is a balancing condition for the western bridge that means uh, to check simply or uh, you can say the reverse also that means if that ratio is satisfied then you can say that no current is flowing through this resistance here right and so now that condition is set to be the balancing condition there so when p by q is equal to r by s the v strain bridge is said to be balanced so here mentioned that this is called uh, balanced condition for the v strain bridge this is called balanced condition for the v strain bridge so now is it clear what is the balanced condition for the v strain bridge or what is the basic principle there simply no current should flow through the junction uh, from b to d right that is nothing but the potential of point B and potential of point D must be same, right? And then uh, for that, that is possible when you can also say like when P by Q is equal to R by S. When ratio of these two resistors is same as that of the ratio of these two resistors, then automatically no current will close this resistance here. So that is a balanced condition here. So that means when some circuit is given and if they are asking like whether the circuit is in balanced condition or not we just verify that if that ratio is satisfied that means we find the p by q value and we find r by s value if both are same then you can say that uh, that the wisdom bridge is balanced here so that is the balancing conditions there right and so next here uh, let us see some other points regarding this wisdom bridge here So therefore mention that uh, that is called Wistram bridge and if ig is equal to 0 then that condition is satisfied or if that ratio is satisfied then ig will become 0. So mention that the IBO ratio, IBO relation is called balancing condition for Wistram bridge. The IBO relation is called balancing condition for the Wistram bridge. when this condition is satisfied when this condition is satisfied current flowing to the galvanometer will be zero 
current flowing to the galvanometer will be zero. Or VB is equal to VD. That means potentials will be same. B and D will be at same potential. And vice versa. That means if IG is equal to zero, then this condition will be satisfied. That also you can say that vice versa. That means if when IG or we can say when IG is zero, then above condition. That means this P by Q must be equal to R by S, right? And so now let us write some points regarding this which from which here. And so as I said, uh, this Wistrom bridge is used to find the unknown resistance, right? This is generally used to find the unknown resistance there. Now we can calculate uh, more accurately if all these resistors are same or at least nearly same. If they are nearly same, then sensitivity that uh, Golna, this uh, Wistrom bridge is said to be more sensitive. That means you will get more near values there or uh, more accurate values. So mention that. Wistrom bridge is said to be more sensitive, more sensitive when all the resistors are equal, when all the resistors are equal. Right? That means um, you can calculate the unknown value more accurately if three of them are equal. If three of them are equal and if we are finding this uh, this value here, then automatically if Golnameter shows zero reading, then uh, for the particular value of this P, then P value is said to be more accurate when compared to the any other combinations there, right? Because to just to take the uh, ratio to be satisfied, you can take any values. Like for example, here uh, this value is I am taking some 10. Uh, let us take 100 and this value let us take 10 and suppose here uh, for this uh, R and S I am taking the ratio like this is 10,000 and this is say 100 right now here uh, sorry 1000 then this ratio P by Q is equal to will get 10 and R by S is also will get uh, 10 and so now here uh, now this, uh, these values, if you are finding this uh, either P value or Q value by using such an arrangement, then it does not give the more accurate value. Some error will be there here. Generally in measurement of uh, any value, error will be there. So that error will be more if all the resistors are different. If all of them are same, for example, then uh, you can calculate those values more accurately there. That means the device is said to be more sensitive. For small changes also, it can identify easily. So that uh, that is the point you need to remember there. When all the resistors are equal, the device is more sensitive. And next point. And so now, if I interchange the galvanometer, position of the galvanometer and position of the cell. So is there any changes taking place in that uh, balancing condition? So if I interchange the resistance, that means if I interchange the position of this galvanometer and the cell here. Interchange in the sense, between B and D, if I connect the cell, and between A and C, if I connect this galvanometer, is there any change in the balancing condition? So I will draw that uh, circuit now. So between these two, what I am saying is between these two, I am connecting a cell here. So some cell, cell will be connected like this. And between these two, if I connect the galvanometer. So now the galvanometer is connected like this. That uh, high resistance remaining usual arrangements will be there. If the connections are like this, then is there any change in the balancing condition? So that means actually in this, you need to write like this. Uh, so previously remember this, our previous part is, so here some resistance is there and here some resistance is there and here some resistance and here also some resistance is there. So this is P, Q, R, S we are taking, right? So then this is the position of the galvanometer. For the balancing condition, P by Q must be equal to R by S, right? Now the galvanometer we are connecting between these two here. Between these two junctions we are connecting that galvanometer. Then actually our condition should be P by R must be equal to Q by S. 
if this condition is satisfied then in this similar to the time saying now if the galvanometer is connected between instead of this if it is connected like this then that is our condition if the galvanometer is connected like this between these two junctions between these two junctions if it is connected then ratio of these two resistors must be equal to ratio of these two resistors so p by r must be equal to q by s then that is the balancing conditions there now we can observe that this ratio and this ratio both are same only right just you can uh, uh, rearrange the terms here q you can write here and r you can write here so that there is no change in the equation so then just we can we need to write this value here actually these two are same only right that means if the galvanometer is connected here then we need to write this condition now this condition and that condition both are similar only there is no change in the balancing condition right but sensitivity of the device may change sensitivity of the device may change here because uh, even though ratios are same some resistance may be smaller and some resistance may be larger resistance you may get there so mention that and write it as an x point when we interchange when we interchange the position of the position of cell and a galvanometer cell and galvanometer then there is no change in balancing condition then there is no change in balancing condition so just draw this diagram and write this equation here and that continue that there is no change in balancing condition but sensitivity of the sensitivity of the wisdom bridge may change sensitivity of the wisdom bridge may say, may change and about this sensitivity and how the error will be we will discuss in detail when you are discussing the meters right and so that means i will draw this yeah, write this equation and also mention that this is nothing but uh, these two are same only that means p by q is nothing but r by s either you can mention like this or you can mention like this just we are arrange, uh, rearranging the terms here we are writing q here and r s or here next so mention that other applications by using by using wish from which by using wish from which we can find unknown resistance unknown resistance or resistivity unknown resistance and or resistivity because once if you know the resistance if they are asking the resistivity you can calculate just by using our resistance formula here r is equal to rho l by a by using that you can find the resistivity there if a uh, resistance of the material is known to us right because you can calculate length and area of cross section by using the dividers like by using a uh, scale you can calculate the length of the wire and by using a uh, screw gauge you can calculate the area of cross section that means radius and from that area of cross section you can calculate so that means now from that you can find the resistivity of that material that means you can also find resistivity of the material next wisdom bridge is also used wisdom bridge is also used to find strain produced in the wire to find a strain produced in the wire so can you say how to find uh, how it finds the strain produced in the wire because you know when you are stretching the wire or when you are compressing the wire then length and area of cross section of the wire changes right when length and area of cross section of the wire is changing then automatically resistance is also changing so then uh, just by measuring the change in that resistance then we can find how much stretched wire in the go in the the um, wisdom bridge and again we find its resistance so just we can calculate the how much change is there in that uh, resistance of that wire so just by finding the resistance change in the resistance of wire we can estimate how much strain is produced in that wire right because we know the relation how the resistance depends on the area of cross section and how it depends on this length of the wires right so that is and similarly in the beginning i said it is also used to measure the uh, intensity of light 
So there are certain re resistors uh, whose value will depend on the uh, light intensity. If your uh, suppose if uh, light is exposed to that resistance is exposed to the light, so then the resistance of such a materials will changes. So those are said to be LD or light dependent resistance. LD or so that means if you are uh, connecting such a LD or here light dependent resistors. If such a light dependent resistors is connected in one of the uh, part here, one of the arm here. Then if you are, uh, then we find the resistance of the wire initially. Now some light is allowed to incident on this, uh, on this resistance here. Then resistance of the wire changes because light is incidenting, the resistance is a light dependent resistance. If you are increasing the intensity of the light, then uh, automatically the resistance of the wire also changes. So then by again by finding how much resistance is changing, then we can estimate how much of light is light energy is incidenting on this. That means like that we can also find the uh, intensity of the light also. So just to mention that also, we can also find, we can also find intensity of light, intensity of light by connecting light dependent resistors in the Wistrom beach by connecting light dependent resistors in the Wistrom beach. And next year uh, there will be some different forms are there and so now actually here uh, by using this Wistrom beach we can solve some circuits here that means we can find some effective resistance here. So when you are finding this effective resistance so simply you need to remember here when the bridge is balanced. So like suppose here in the usual standard uh, I am taking this as some galvanometer is present here, right. So now if this uh, if this Wistrom bridge is balanced Wistrom bridge, then what I can say is, then you can remove this resistance here, whatever this resistance G is there, you can remove that resistance because when the bridge is balanced, even though that resistance is connected in the circuit, no current is flowing through that, right. That is nothing but our condition for the balanced Wistrom bridge. That means if the if that condition is satisfied, uh, for example, in a given circuit, if that condition is satisfied. So like what I am saying is, suppose I am taking this uh, circuit like this. I am taking a uh, circuit similar to that of Wistrom bridge like this. That means now I am saying how this Wistrom bridge helps in finding the equivalent resistance or effective resistance. Suppose say here instead of this voltmeter, I am taking some resistance because that voltmeter G also represents some resistance. Like here, uh, for example, I am taking this is 20 ohms and this is 40 ohms and let us say this is uh, 4 ohms and this is say 8 ohms and this is say some 10, right. Now is this balanced with from bridge or not? So just to verify that, now we need to find actually the effective resistance between these two. That is our problem here, for example. Now how to use this uh, balanced Wistrom bridge condition to solve the effective resistance means? In this, uh, just to verify here, P by Q is equal to, this is our P and this is Q, right? So P by Q is equal to 20 by 40. So we will get 1 by 2. Then I am writing R by S. This is our R and this is S. So R by S is equal to 4 by 8. So we'll get 1 by 2, right? So P by Q is equal to R by S. So that means that the given bridge is a balanced Wistrom bridge. It is in balanced condition only. That means if we connect any battery between A and B, no current flows through this 10 ohm resistor, right? Now our aim is to find the effective resistance between the points A and B. So to now to find the effective resistance between the points A and B and when this condition is satisfied, that means if in this circuit for example, what I can say is we can remove this resistance here. We can remove that resistance because even though that resistance is connected, no current is flowing through them that we already proved in the previous uh, discussion like when you are proving the condition for the balance of Wistrom bridge. So no current will flow to this uh, resistance here. So then you can remove that resistance. So if once this resistance is removed, then you can easily say this. 20 and this 40 are in series and this 4 and uh, 8 are in series. So then both the arrangements are in parallel. That means circuit will convert into simple series and parallel combinations, right? But if that resistance is present, that means if you are considering that if we don't know this balanced Wistrom bridge, 
and if this resistance is also there and if I ask find the effective resistance. For example, if you don't know this balanced condition, then you can't say directly that these two are in series, you can't say because in middle one more resistance is connected there. So that is the advantage of uh, uh, this wisdom bridge here. By knowing the balanced condition of wisdom bridge, whenever such arrangement is there, you can first verify that whether the bridge is balanced or not. If it is balanced, then we can remove this resistance here. So if you remove this resistance, right, then circuit will be easy. Then here uh, these two will be in series, so you will get 60 and these two will be in series, so you will get 12, then 60 and 12 are in parallel. So you can find the effective resistance easily, right. So that is the advantage of this wisdom bridge. So whenever such a balanced wisdom bridge if you are observing in the given problem, you can remove the resistance connected in the place of the goronometer. So in the given circuit, this is a standard form. You can't expect uh, all the problems based on the wisdom bridge will be given like this only. They may give in different shapes. The same wisdom bridge may be there in different shapes. Just it is a combination of four uh, resistors only, right? So that means uh, now you need to identify the position of the goronometer, where the goronometer is connected in the given wisdom bridge. So you need to identify that. And so if the bridge is balanced, you can eliminate the resistance connected in the place of this goronometer, right? 